All right. Uh, welcome, Rohan Pinto, Chief Technology Officer at One Cosmos. It's great to have you back. I appreciate you taking time. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Michael. We want to talk about Atlas authentication today, but before we jump into that, I'd like to take a step back and just talk about the ways that users authenticate today uh, remotely. Can you can you just breach on that uh, first? Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me back. Now, it's been de facto standards for a very, very long time that people have been used to using user IDs and passwords. But when it comes up to remote connections or VPNs, uh, a simple username and password wouldn't suffice. And people wanted to have some kind of strong authentication and they would supplement that with MFAs like a secure ID token, uh, one-time tokens, sometimes via SMS or via email. And that's the best the industry has come up with so far in order to be able to secure remote access within an enterprise. And that's been the way it is for, I would say, over 10 years. Right. So then we move to biometric authentication. Correct. And the different ways of biometric authentication are what? Uh, right. So, and then came biometrics, right? So the first biometrics that people would uh, adopt was a fingerprint. And it all started with Apple launching its touch ID on its mobile device. And then you have laptops that actually had biometric devices embedded onto them. Um, so the first biometric that people try to adopt is a fingerprint. Use a fingerprint to unlock and authenticate into a system. And later on, as things advanced or progressed, people started using things like Face ID to authenticate as well. But the problem with that approach is that both with touch ID or face ID or fingerprint or face is that there's absolutely no assurance that the person who's authenticating on the other end of the line is the person who you intend to let into your platform or into your system. So while biometrics were being adopted, there always was a challenge of actually associating the biometrics with the actual person who's trying to authenticate into the platform. Okay, so then how do we solve for that? So what's very important to understand when it comes up to using biometrics is that you cannot just hope that the biometrics that are registered belong to the person. You need to have some valid proof, uh, some valid assurance that the biometrics actually belong to the person that you have that you're letting onto your platform. For example, on my phone, I've got my fingerprint enrolled. I've got my kids fingerprints enrolled. So now if my kid uses my fingerprint, to, her fingerprint to access any platform, the system might think that it is me trying to authenticate, but it's not me. So the way one could solve it is by actually binding identity to the biometrics, where you actually let a person walk through a certain series of processes or steps and prove, uh, prove, himself, prove himself, or rather uh, verify that his identity is actually his and then associate biometrics with that identity. There is also something called as live ID, like at One Cosmos, while we do support fingerprint and face ID, we have got something called as live ID, where we actually detect that the person is a real person. We do a whole bunch of depth calculations on the face to ensure that the nose and the ears are not on the same pane. We do a little bit of math. We've got a bit of AI algorithms that ensure that it's a real 3D person and not a recording of another video or not a photograph that is being used to, to mimic a person. And these biometrics are actually bound to a verified identity that is registered on the platform, which now gives us the assurance that the person authenticating is really Rohan Pinto and not somebody else altogether. Okay, so now we have a, a essentially a live selfie that kind of defeats facial spoofing. Uh, we have That's this um, live, let's call it a live ID, right. bound to an identity. Um, and we then have a, a, a mobile application that you use to uh, basically do this live this live um, biometric and then authenticate. But Correct. we're now introducing a appless authentication. So what does that mean? So, so when it comes up to, uh, when we are talking about appless authentication, is that people have got a lot of apps on their phone. There are tons of apps. And people find it sometimes uh, difficult to pull out a phone, authenticate to the phone, then search for the app that they need, launch the app, authenticate into the app, and then use that app to authenticate onto a system, made web or an IoT device. Now, what appless authentication brings into the picture is that you use your normal phone's camera to, let's say, scan a QR code on a website, 
and it launches the web app on the browser of the phone itself. Today, uh, the phone browsers do have access to the camera and to uh, the device biometrics and with technologies like FIDO2 because FIDO2 is built into uh, iOS and Android devices. So we leverage FIDO2 uh, capabilities that are on the device to actually authenticate the user and bind that particular user to an identity that's stored on the platform before letting him into the platform. So the whole appless experience makes it very seamless. Uh, it's, it's zero footprint, there's zero code, there's zero apps that need to be deployed, and the user can use his real device to authenticate into a system and access services. That sounds very uh, futuristic. No application on the phone. I'm just scanning a QR code with the phone camera. It's accessing the browser and it's performing uh, black box magic is what it sounds like. Um, right. Does this work on all devices on all phones or just special phones? Uh, it actually works on all phones that are, I would say, manufactured after 2000 and I don't know, eight. There are some legacy phones where uh, uh, FIDO2 is not enabled on the device. Uh, so, yes, the industry is moving forwards in terms of FIDO2 adoption as well. So as the industry adopts more of those standards, Apple has already adopted it. Google has already adopted it. I mean, all uh, devices today do have FIDO2 capabilities. But yes, if you're looking at devices that were manufactured, let's say, before 2005, it might not have FIDO2 capabilities, but you still have the ability of authenticating using something called as Live ID which is not really FIDO2 based strong authentication, it's Live ID based authentication, but the actual value prop is when you add Live ID to FIDO. Got it, got it, okay. All right, so when is this capability available? Uh, it, it, it's, sorry, did you say when or where? When. <laughs> so this capability is available on our platform today, and it's not just us. There are a lot of other vendors out there as well that do offer FIDO2 capabilities and appless authentication into systems and things. But the differential between our uh, uh, appless experience and the others is that it's not just a FIDO token or authenticating a token. We actually bind that particular FIDO token to a verified identity. So the system that you're accessing is not just secured using strong authentication, it's secured using a combination of strong authentication plus a verified identity. It's pretty amazing technology, Rohan. Uh, you seem to have outdone yourself once again. Is there anything um, to add before we wrap this up? Uh, well, I mean, FIDO is growing, the industry is adopting it, but while organizations are adopting the standards, it's always important to remember that we do not want to authenticate a token because a token can be any token. What's very important for us to remember is that that strong authentication mechanism that you have, be it a FIDO key, a USB key, be it an appless experience on your phone, you need to have the assurance that that particular token is bound to a real verified individual before you let that individual access your systems because your what you're trying to protect is not the access point. What you're trying to actually protect is your data. It's the systems and the data and the assets that you have within an organization. So if you don't guard your friend door and you do not know that it is actually Rohan Pinto who is trying to log into the system, but rather a token, uh, you're, you are exposing your assets and your data out uh, to breaches. So it is really important to ensure that with strong authentication, you also verify real identities before letting them onto your platform. That's that's really amazing. You know, we've heard for a while that identity is becoming the new uh, security perimeter. This sounds like um, it is finally the ushering in um, of identity in, in, into the perimeter. Um, so uh, congratulations Absolutely. on the new uh, capability. Really a pleasure talking to you today. I appreciate you taking time. Excellent. Thank you, Michael. It was a pleasure talking to you as well.